Norway's transition from worshipping the old gods to the Christian god took many centuries and was an unusual mix of being mostly tolerant between the two religions, but sometimes very violent. The twilight of the Norse gods was indeed coming, but not because of the actions of giants and trolls at Ragnarok, as in Nordic myth. The basic instrument of conversion was the rite of baptism, administered by churchmen as a means to nominally bring in an individual or group into the Christian fold. In 826, the king of Denmark, Harald Klack, was baptized. The baptism took place in the abbey at Mainz, in the presence of the Carolinian emperor, Louis the Pious, and his entire family and household. The best-known documentary record of a conversion is that of Guthrum, the Viking leader who was defeated in battle by King Alfred in 878. The terms of the truce included Guthrum's conversion to Christianity. In addition, one of the early sources tells us this, men who know say that some of the first settlers who colonized Iceland in about 870 to 930 of the Common Era had received baptism. But that did not spread through their families, because the sons of some of them put up temples and carried out sacrifices, and the land was completely heathen for a hundred years. Hakon the Good, 935 to 961, was the first Norwegian king who attempted to introduce Christianity to the country. He had three churches built in more. These, however, were soon burnt down, and the priests he had summoned from England were killed. The king himself was compelled to participate in pagan rites among the peasantry. A handful of determined Viking leaders used their royal power to bring their kingdoms into the mainstream of Latin Christendom. The church found very effective missionaries in the persons of four Scandinavian kings. The first was Harold Bluetooth of Denmark, who underwent conversion in about 965. Harold could claim that he had made the Danes Christians, although how true that was in actual practice remained unclear. After Harold's death, Denmark saw a pagan revival in the late 10th century in opposition to the advance of Christianity. The Odin cult seems to have particularly prospered at this time, which also indicates that it never really went away. The second king was Olaf Tryggvason, the king of Norway from 995 to 1000, who established the first Christian church in Norway at Oslo, and who tasked Leif Erikson with converting the settlers in Greenland to Christianity. The third was Norway's Olaf Haraldsson, or Olaf II, who unfortunately pushed the Christianizing effort with such fanatical and brutal zeal, it alienated enough of his subjects to spur them to strike an alliance with the Danish king, Knut, with the purpose of driving Olaf out. Olaf died in the Battle of Stiklestad in 1030. According to the sagas, his battle cry on the field was Christ's men. The church pronounced his death in battle a martyrdom. This St. Olaf is still celebrated on a national holiday in Norway. The fourth king to push the Christianizing of the Vikings was another Olaf, this time Olaf Skotkonung of Sweden, who happened to be instrumental in the defeat of the above-mentioned Olaf Tryggvason, Norway's Christianizing king. Olaf Skotkonung adhered to a policy of prudent tolerance regarding his pagan subjects. One contemporary chronicler wrote, He might build a church and introduce Christianity, but he must not force people to abandon the old faith. Only those who wish to should be converted. Olaf's son and successor, Jacob, was forced to yield to popular pressure, jettisoned his biblical name, and chose a traditional one, Anand. A genuine change of faith on the part of the baptized was not compulsory. Even forced baptisms, such as those commanded by 10th century kings in Norway, were considered valid by the church. The pagan ways remained strikingly strong and long-lasting in Viking Scandinavia over the following years, even though, astonishingly, the religion of Odin and Thor had no priestly class who might have resisted Christianity as a threat to their social or political standing. Odin in Valhalla must have had a good laugh at the discomfort of his Christian enemies. The twilight of the gods in the Viking lands was going to take longer than originally forecast. 
we see this pull between the two faiths in grave markers from Sweden to Iceland, where images from the Nordic pantheon are mixed in with Christian symbols. Other examples include the famous stave churches, made from Norwegian pine. The stave church had design features borrowed from traditional halls for Viking chieftains, and even temples of the Norse gods. The craftsmanship of the stave church also reflects the skills used in the making of Norsemen's longships. Also of interest are a number of so-called Thor's hammer crosses, rather ambiguous objects that seem to have been intentionally made to be taken either way. It may be that Vikings started wearing Thor's hammer in response to Christians wearing crosses. Some of the pendants seem to be transitional, and there must have been many people who were undecided as to what they believed. A 10th century Thor's hammer pendant, made of silver and found at Hedeby, has a simple punched decoration with a discreet cross in the center. And so the triumph of Christianity was, in the long run, inevitable. Christianity introduced the idea of charity and compassion as moral obligations and good works as necessary for personal salvation. The Viking ideal of loyalty and service to the community took on a new dimension. And the message of hope, of rebirth on the heels of disaster, found new resonance in the story of Jesus Christ and his resurrection as redemption for the human race. For centuries, the songs and stories about Odin, Fricka, Thor, and Valhalla, the hallowed hall of dead heroes, disappeared from living memory, only to be rediscovered, thanks to the sagas left by Icelandic poets and scribes in the 1100s and 1200s. But far from suppressing or abolishing the Viking heart, the advent of Christianity progressively gave it a rich new dimension, instilling a greater regard for humanity. On the other hand, conversion never gave the emergent monarchs of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden the extra boost to their authority they had envisaged. Instead, they discovered what the kings of France, England, and Spain, and the Holy Roman Emperor as well, had already found. Embracing Christianity introduced a new alien power into their territories, the Roman Catholic Church. And so, the road to Christianity in Norway was not a straight line, nor was it a smooth road, but in the long run, the worship of the old gods faded away, and left the people with the faith and celebrations they know today. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for a list of books and online references featured in this video.